Hello, this is Weekly Reflections, and I'm Nancy Joy. I uh, had a wonderful retreat this weekend, another 5D retreat, and we are in the middle of a uh, mutable grand cross. The planets are aligning to <clears throat> square us up, uh, do, uh, do their oppositions and their transits, and uh, pushing, pushing again really hard everything to the surface we need to feel and transform which is emotional transformation, right? So here's a big aha. I I've, I've mentioned it a few years ago, but now I see it in a whole new light. And uh, I call it, I call this reflections, why, W-H-Y, no more. Kind of like wine no more, huh? So here's the quote. What you achieve on earth is only a small part of the deal. If there is a secret I could whisper, it would be that it's all inside of you already. Every single thing. Find the glory inside yourself beyond the roles and the dramas so you can dance the game of life with reckless abandon. And that comes from the book, The Afterlife of Billy Finger uh, by Annie Keegan. And if you haven't read this book, it really is. It's, it's a must read because um, Billy, it's a basic story about true story about a sister and brother, and the sister was very accomplished, and the brother was an addict and a ne'er-do-well, quite good-looking, so involved with a lot of uh, women and escapades of such. And um, at one point, she stopped saving him. Her life had pretty much been rescuing Billy. And after she stopped saving him, he uh, has an incident and gets hit by a truck and dies, of course, leaving her feeling very guilty. But he comes back to dictate a book to her um, because after he crossed over he actually and it's quite a beautiful story he became the universe in other words we are all of that like we talked about last week a roomy thing are you you are not a drop of water in the ocean you are the ocean in a drop of water it's the same thing but his main thing he's coming back to tell you is you guys have it all wrong it isn't a, about being the perfect person and not being a drug addict and always being this way and having enough money and being able to help or whatever our precepts of what this perfect life is supposed to be, we send it out and think others should be it also. And what he's trying to say here, I was a soul that came to experience the exact life I experienced. The soul doesn't get all caught up in the dramas and the judgments of, of how things are unfolding. The soul is here to experience life in the physical form so it can become more than it ever thought it could. It can expand and eventually um, become the universe in a drop of water, so to speak, in your own soul. And so it's really a lovely book to read, and I, I highly recommend it. Um, Billy's soul chose a life of addiction to have that experience. Our souls do not attach pro the programming to the experience. Uh, it's our past that, that holds us in judgment. So that really causes you to revalue, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry for this person. Well, in one way, in a human way, we're here with our emotions. And yes, you do feel empathy. Um, but but it's a, a way to push us. What a better way, what a better thought and feeling to understand, to push us into this grand mutable cross we're in right now where the squares and oppositions and transits are all uh, pushing us out of our dramas and stories and shadow patterns and back into uh, light, back into our understanding. Uh, Simone Matthews had a really good, if you want to look her astrology up, really good, my links are on the written portion. Uh, explaining the grand mutable cross. But this uh, took me to a very dear friend I have <clears throat> has been on this journey with me since the mid-90s about. And she's always, her physical body has always been in pain from one issue after another after another. Um, and it's been a very difficult journey for her. And all of us, and she's done a lot of emotional work through the years. She's very in tune a very wonderful being and helps many people, um, but her life is uh, is very difficult. We would look at her and say, wow, what a struggle, what a struggle. 
Uh, in fact, she's a touchstone for me whenever my life gets incredibly, feeling incredibly difficult for me, I, I think, oh, God, God bless Sue. I mean, I, I just hold her in such a space of love for whatever her soul is here doing, it, it's magnificent. Uh, but for the for many years, all of us awakened ones and even the retreats and readings she did with me, we were trying to figure out why. Why why would her soul choose this? Why? What isn't she looking at? What's her lesson? What is she hiding from? And did lots of years of that work, which was good work for her and made her who she is today. So wise and so awake, however, did not change the physical reality. And so uh, after Billy Finger one day talking with her, we just came to this beautiful space, you know, the hell with the why. It doesn't matter. This is, and once she took herself out of trying to figure out what she did wrong and blaming herself and feeling bad about it, she, yeah, she was still in pain, but the suffering was gone. She embraced the life that she has <coughs> in so many wonderful ways. And a great article or YouTube on this, you should all look up Teal Swan if you don't know her. She's pretty great. Uh, about exposing people to shadow patterns. And one of her most recent uh, YouTubes is called uh, Fuck the Law of Attraction. I think you'll really enjoy it. That is an actual law of the universe, but it's been so misused to hold people in just what we were saying. Guilt and blame looking for what's wrong with them. And so where does that keep you? It keeps you in what's wrong. And then emotionally, you may be in physical pain, but that keeps you in emotional pain. So the habit of constantly looking at the why of things is holding us back. And that's something for everyone to get in touch with now. Um, in in uh, the book that uh, Byron Katie wrote, A Thousand Names for Joy, it's a wonderful story also you would enjoy. But she said, I came to see my suffering wasn't a result of my not having control. It was a result of my not accepting reality. Same thing, right? No arguing with that. <laughs> Sue and I agreed that someday all this would make sense. Um, the soul was experiencing what the soul was experiencing was perfect for her in ways we cannot know. And accepting that reality brings you so much peace and opens up so much space for other sharing and growth and being able to help other people. Uh, with all your wisdom that you've learned on this soul journey instead of being all wrapped up in what's wrong. Perhaps this shift is still easier said than done. It is sim it's simply to remember that we are the creators. Here, my kitty, playing with our creations. Here she is. I don't know if she'll come up high and say hi. Here, whoa. Whoa, here she is. This is Isis, not the terrorist, the kitty. <laughs> Um, we are all creators playing with our creations as we expand, grow, and dance here in the physical world. This is one of the thousands of cosmic experience our souls choose. So if you are struggling and exhausted with your experience, embrace its reality and move forward. Uh, here is a great affirmation to leave you with from Tut, the universe. I don't know if any of you follow him, but here we go. Here's the thing that will shift you away from the suffering. I am an ancient gladiator of joy who, cho who chooses the jungles of time and space with my superhero friends to experiment with shape-shifting, mind-bending, and planetary transformation. Any twinges of self-doubt are just there to keep me grounded enough to refrain from laughing at things others might find terrifying. I love it. It puts you where you need to be. Um, and it can really shift your emotional field. It's your choice. Stay stuck in your story, suffering, or walk into your God selves now and catch your own magic. Have a great week. We'll see you again next week. Solstice full moon next Monday. Take care of who you are. Bye now.